Okay, traders, welcome to today's live analysis session with, uh, with me, Patrick Munley. Um, before we get going, a couple of things. One, uh, if you can hear me and you can see the tick mill welcome screen, if you can type a Y in the chat box, just so I know we're ready to roll. Thanks for that. Uh, second, um, with respect to today's session, I'm going to cover, I've got 26 charts, if we've got enough time to get through today. And um, if you have any questions, or um, or you want me to, if it, or you want me to take a look at a chart that isn't on my watch list, then um, please wait to the end. I'll open up a, a brief Q and A session, uh, which will give you opportunity to uh, ask any questions regarding today's content or any um, additional instruments you'd like me to uh, to take a look at. So uh, before we get going into, uh, into today's discussion. Um, important to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Um, it's the most important thing for, for you guys today is that um, the views expressed here by me today or any opinions regarding the charts or the setups are solely mine. They are not indicative of or representative of those held by Tickmill UK Limited or uh, Tickmill Europe Limited. Okay. For those who are here for the first time today, I'm just going to give you a brief introduction to myself. Um, after I graduated from uh, King's College London, I joined a, a city PLC consulting firm. After a few years of learning the ropes, I left and went on to uh, successfully co-found and then exit a consulting startup um, in, in late 2004. Um, I then moved on to explore my uh, passion for markets. I had some capital to play with and some time on my hands. And so I started day trading or more appropriately, probably day gambling, uh, the S&P 500. And after some early beginners luck, I, uh, I started racking up some solid and then some quite significant gains. However, as is often the case, the beginners luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I basically began to average down into what were going to prove to be uh, significant losing positions. I ultimately gave back all my gains and took a, a six-figure hit on my personal capital. So this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to look around and see if I could identify traders who were doing that. And, uh, and I sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. I worked with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years. And during this time, I, uh, I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching and developing a strategy that importantly suited my personality. I extensively back tested and forward tested that strategy and developed a rigorous risk management approach to underpin it. Underpin it. But most importantly, during that period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably uh, the most important watershed shift I made was from being a highly goal orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming a purely process orientated individual. So that, what, what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and had to start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to uh, consistently execute my trading strategy oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. Once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of, of trading as being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. And I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My uh, multi-strategy approach has delivered uh, profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through my managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. You can actually see the performance data on the screen there. Um, since 2010, I've personally mentored over 100 private traders 
of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've also consulted for numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing written content, um, webinars and live presentation content on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy, development and execution. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert at Tickmill, providing not just these webinars, but also a daily technical market outlook and a, uh, a chart of the day or a setup of the day. I also uh, provide some interactive videos in terms of setups I'm, I'm tracking in the markets. Um, you can go on to the Tickmill blog and you can actually sign up to get the, uh, these updates directly to your email uh, via their, uh, their websites. Um, my other passion project is that of uh, head of trading and trader education for a leading trader education brand called fxcareerswap.com. Uh, we offer development and more importantly funding to retail trading talents. FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders market and trading strategy knowledge, we work on mindset development and through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. For those that are interested in learning more about FX Career Swap, uh, you can contact them directly by phone with the number here, or you can drop them an email and the guys in London will, uh, will be sure to give you the relevant information. Okay, so that gives you uh, a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. Let's, uh, let's jump into the charts now. Like I say, 26 charts to run through and uh, we're gonna look at uh, some potential action areas. So by looking at the market structure and identifying uh, areas of interest, we can identify potential trading opportunities. So we're gonna start here with the dollar index. Um, dollar it has been in obviously a sharp decline, but we're in a corrective phase at the moment. Now that correction could have completed or potentially completed at this 1995 high, Balance of probability suggests to me that we should see another high to ostensibly test an equality objective up towards 91 to 91.50. Now, if we do get up into this area, I would certainly be looking at bearish reversal patterns to set short positions to target another leg to the downside to at least complete this interim wave structure in the three, four here and looking for a wave five. Uh, wave five could actually so now towards the 8750, which if I just go out to the weekly charts, uh, just refresh your memory why that level's of significance, because that basically is an equality objective versus this structure here. Uh, let me zoom out a bit further. So the weekly charts we reviewed uh, at the start of the year, and uh, we know that 8750 is an ABC corrective target versus this, uh, this swing high in terms of the dollar index. Back to the intraday chart. So what, I, what I'd be looking for here is a potential pullback now to test or retest this uh, 89.80 area as support. We've got um, projected daily range uh, support down here at 90, and we've got the projected weekly range support just above 90. So what's for any bullish reversal patterns in this area? Uh, you can set long positions targeting this 91.50, but certainly pay attention to how we respond in this, uh, in this area, because I think this is going to be the next leg down in terms of uh, the dollar index. Uh, a pair, I, or sorry, an instrument I'd had a request to take a look at. This is the 10 year notes in, uh, in terms of price, not yield. I do cover the yield uh, with the guys in the trading, on the trading floor for FX Career Swap. But uh, what I'm looking at here is the price, so the, the, the bond pricing. So as prices go up, yields go down. As prices go down, yields go up. They operate in the inverse fashion. And, um, and this pop that we've had in terms of uh, the bond price, the ten, uh, sorry, the, the notes, the 10-year pr uh, price has been basically supporting this dollar bounce. But I think we're going to start to run out of steam, certainly as we get back into this uh, 137.07 area, I expect we're going to see another leg lower in terms of price um, for these 10-year uh, for for these ten -year notes. So watch as we trade into this area for potential resistance and take another leg uh, to the downside in terms of these 10-year uh, these notes. Euro dollar. So we've held, uh, we've held the support here at the 2050 level. Uh, I did have an equality objective that uh, we could still test versus this swing high at 122.26, 
your quality of target is actually 120. Um, but for now, uh, we'll start this move off the lows is starting to uh, to gather some steam. I think we'll we should run into resistance uh, certainly as we trade back into this 122 area. Now, any pullback from there that finds support at 121.40s, 121.50s would suggest that uh, the correction here is complete, and we're actually going to trade to retest. Uh, highs at 123.40 and on to uh, the upside objective, the interim upside objective at uh, 124.50. From there, I'd anticipate we do see uh, another corrective phase, but pay attention to these two areas. If we can get through this uh, 121.60, watch how we trade at 122, pull back, hold the 121.40 area for um, long positions to basically take out the prior highs en route to this uh, 124.50. 50 zone. Sterling has uh, has been experiencing some upside pressure. The, 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 the pop we've seen in sterling has really been driven more by the uh, the cross, the euro sterling, as opposed to, I think, uh, generic or uh, intrinsic sterling strength. Um, but certainly at the moment, whilst, we, whilst we've broken out here and we hold these prior highs, then I think we can test uh, this ascending trend line just above the 138, which was a target I talked about back end of last year. Uh, I think once we get into this zone, then I think we can see Sterling run out of, it, of a bit of steam in the interim, and we could see a pullback back into test support back towards the 134 and this ascending trend line. But ultimately, I'm looking for Sterling to trade higher over the course of the year to get a test of this 140 area. But like I say, pay attention. We're holding projected range, a uh, daily range resistance at 137.44 at the moment. Uh, but if we do get through there, then I think we get up and test this ascending trend line resistance, but certainly watch for um, bearish reversal patterns in that zone to set, um, set short positions. The dollar yen uh, continues to correct. I'm looking for the dollar yen to get back down into this uh, 103.20 area. And from there, I think we do then have the potential to set up a move to test up towards 104.50. So I'll be watching very carefully. We've got daily projected range support, weekly projected range support. We've also got this uh, projected descending trend line. So watch how we trade as we come into this 103 area, bullish reversal patterns there. You get nice risk reward uh, to get in on the long side, certainly look for a test of the descending trend line resistance. And then if we get through there, bull flag pattern would set us up into this 104.50. Aussie. This, uh, like many of these, um, these pairs that we're going to look at is in a consolidation uh, cycle at the moment, but ultimately I'm looking now for, um, for us to break higher here in terms of this Aussie. I think we can uh, potentially get a test up in towards the target, which I have up at 80 as an interim upside objective. Expect a bit more consolidation. Certainly today, as we get back into this um, 78 area, we've got projected weekly range resistance, daily projected range resistance. I think that could be the catalyst for another pullback to frustrate bulls in the interim. But uh, as we then hold 77.20s as support, then uh, there is the potential, I think, for us to break higher, take out this triple top. Uh, as those who I work with will know, I think the third test of any ascending, or, or sorry, the third test of any structural resistance or support or trend line support or resistance uh, has a tendency to hold. Once we start talking about four or the fourth or the fifth test, I'm more in favor of a break and, um, and then we can see a breakout occur. So um, watch as we test 78, anticipate some resistance there on this third test, pullbacks supported towards 77.20 should see us take out the highs on route to that 80 level. Kiwi, similar type story here. We're looking at potential inverse head and shoulders at, at highs here, which like I say, uh, similar to the Aussie, we get up today, we're, we're checking uh, projected weekly range resistance at, above the 72 handle, seeing a little bit of uh, profit taking potentially develop here. Certainly I think as we get back into this 7236, Again, another frustration move. These, these consolidation phases, especially with these uh, in these wave four scenarios, are set basically to frustrate traders. Um, so you've really got to pick your spot. So if we if we fade here at the, so, uh, towards the 7230 area, I expect a, a pullback, a whipsaw here back into the 7140s. But again, we're watching for bullish reversal patterns here. 
um, set long positions, ultimately targeting a breach of the prior high of 73.13 en route to a test of 74. So um, there are two way opportunities here. If you, if, you look, if you intend to fade this zone with a bearish four hour reversal, you want to keep your, uh, your risk tight. But uh, because what we could be looking at is another, is another leg here, which could set up this move. So we'd have ABC uh, to the downside at the 70 level, which is what I was looking for initially, but this, uh, this move is looking a little impulsive at the moment. But if you get in on the short side here, and you, once we get back down and test support here, you certainly wanna have a risk-free position because it could be that you've got that, that move occurring, but um, more likely than not at the moment, looking at price action, I think we, uh, we should hold support and, uh, and ultimately uh, see a run higher. Looney obviously trades the inverse of uh, the Aussie and the Kiwi, uh, continue to trade within this potential ending diagonal, but um, my sense at this stage, looking at uh, the broader market, we probably have more work to do on the downside with respect to the Looney. But again, thinking in terms of two-way trading opportunities, there is a counter trend opportunity here. If we get a leg lower to test 125.70s, which is this uh, descending trend line of the wedge. Uh, watch for bullish reversal patterns there and get nice risk reward, certainly to trade for a test of descending trend line resistance up towards 127.30. Swissy, uh, pulling back. I've been watching this one. I'm watching for potential inverse head and shoulders scenario in the Swissy, which I've, uh, I've talked about for, uh, for quite a while now. Um, Let's just draw this one in. I'm sure it's uh, I'm sure it's apparent to all of you that we have the left shoulder here, and we have the right uh, sorry the head here, and then we have the potential for a right shoulder to develop. I'm watching support at 88.27 is the area of interest and. Uh, see if we can uh, if we can get in there on uh, on the short side in terms of the um the swissy sterling yen um looking for a pullback here uh back into the pivot supports at uh 141.50, then I think we get another pop, pop higher, consolidate, again, consolidation phase, uh, frustrating traders, I think, first and foremost, but any move then back into this um, 141.30 area is, uh, is setting up then a opportunity on the long side to basically target 43 and the top side of this um, ascending trend line resistance. So uh, key areas in terms of the sterling yen are gonna be this 141.20 for longs and uh, counter trend shorts above 143. Euro yen. Euro yen again, looks like it, we want to get a retest of the underside of this trend line, which we were holding. So I'm looking for, as we hold uh, 125.28, let's see if we can get a move back up into uh, 126.70, projected weekly range resistance. Uh, we've only got until tomorrow, but 126.80 area. And if we, uh, if we fade there, if we get into this area and we fade, I think we've got another leg of downside to ultimately get a test of this uh, 124.50 in terms of the Euro yen. 124.70. So watch the bearish reversal patterns on this retest here if we get it as an opportunity to do something on the short side in the Euro Yen. Aussie Yen. I was looking for a break here. Uh, don't know if we're going to get it at the moment. Um, looking for us to take out. Well, we'd, we'd retested this trend line support. We found some um, buyers on the initial test and, um, and the pop higher uh, ultimately faded at, uh, at this 80, uh, or, or looked like it's fading at the 84.60. We had um, some nice reversal patterns yesterday, but we haven't seen any follow through to the downside. So whilst we hold here, um, let me just bring this up here. So whilst, if we hold this trend line again from current levels, then I look for a test of the 82 level, but certainly that 82 level will be an opportunity to do something on the short side as we make that third test of the projected um, ascending trend line resistance, so watch for bearish reversal patterns in that zone to do uh, to set short positions. 
And what we're always looking for on these new highs to give us to, to give us the confirmation or the confidence to get in on account of trend position is we want to see and be paying attention to momentum divergence, which uh, which is important to suggest that the move has uh, is a short term exhaustion move. So um, we want to always be paying attention to that uh, momentum divergence on these new highs. Euro Aussie. This one has uh, has potential to put in a double bottom here. I'm going to watch uh, watch this four hour close. I think there's an opportunity potentially here to get long the euro Aussie to play for a move up into uh, into this weekly range resistance 158.30. So potential double bottom here. And like I've just said, what we notice is we've got some nice divergence. So I'm going to see where we close uh, at two two p.m. Uh, GMT because I think we could have uh, could have an opportunity. On the um, on the long side in terms of this euro Aussie versus this double bottom, euro sterling looking to hold this trend line support, but for me at the moment any any strength in euro sterling is ultimately a, a fade um, as I'm looking for us to get down into the 86 level um, on the weekly chart. Let me just pull that up for you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. This is the area I really want to see tested. If we can get a move into 86, then I'd certainly be, uh, be looking for reversal patterns in the um, Euro sterling to do something on the long side. But between uh, between now and there, I think we, we see continued pressure in Euro sterling. So whilst we hold resistance here at the 89 level, um, I'd be looking for, for lower prices in terms of Euro sterling and ultimately targeting that 86 level on, uh, on the weekly chart, which would give us uh, an opportunity to get in on the long side. Um, Sterling Kiwi. We are looking for Sterling Kiwi to now test uh, into this support area at the 89 level, complete, complete a correction versus this move off the lows. Now, the, this, this Sterling Kiwi could be interesting because what we've got here is, um, is we've basically got a, well, actually, We've potentially got a double bottom of sorts. Technically, not you know, it doesn't meet uh, the strict, uh, sorry, strict criteria. But um, to the naked eye, you can see that we've held this area, this eighty-six twenty as support. And what we could do here is we could get this move into this zone, which would give us a, a long setup because I'm looking for a test of this ninety-two fifty. Uh, which could prove terminal for the next leg to the downside. Or what we might get here is this, this test of this, um, this support area with bullish reversal patterns, obviously, to confirm the, uh, the long trade. We could be looking at a quite significant then inverse head and shoulders scenario. So we hold here. And we hold here. You can see there that this double bottom would basically be the head and... Um, and we would have, uh, we could be looking at a, at a more significant low in terms of the sterling kiwi. So that's one to keep an eye on. But certainly, if you if you if you get into this trade, you have the opportunity to get in here. Um, pay attention to how we trade at this 92.50, 92.60, because uh, this could be the, the next leg lower in terms of the, the sterling kiwi. Dollar yuan uh, looking to hold support here at the weekly projected range support. Uh, 6.45, uh, looking for bullish reversals here to get back up and retest the prior highs, monthly projected range resistance held uh, to the tick. So pull back to weekly range uh, support. If we can get uh, bullish reversal patterns here, I think we can get another run, another test of the 6.5 level in terms of the dollar yuan. S&P 500 uh, posted chart of the day today. Uh, very interesting technical pattern developing here. I will be paying attention to uh, to any test here into um, the weekly R3, daily projected range resistance, projected trend line resistance, all coming in at around this 30, uh, 38, 90, 39 level. Bearish reversal patterns are, uh, are an opportunity to get in on the short side. Certainly we get a retest, I would anticipate, of this 38, 30 area and potentially down to test Projected range support, uh, projected uh, ascending trend line support at this 37.20 zone. Dow looking, at if we can, if we can take out these highs, um, then I think we get the Dow up into this 
31,470, 31,540. Bearish reversal patterns there. I think we can look safely to get a test of the 30,700 level. Uh, maybe we get one more high there to uh, frustrate the shorts. But ultimately, I'm looking then for us to test down towards this 30,000 level and uh, the third test of this projected trend line here in terms of the Dow. The DAX, <coughs> looking for pullbacks here to basically find support at this ascending trend line, projected daily um, range support, 13,800. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there. Then I think that sets up the next leg higher in the DAX to test this ascending, projected ascending trend line resistance, 14,400 monthly projected range resistance coming in just above there at uh, 14,470. So bearish reversal patterns here with momentum, uh, sorry, momentum divergence confirmation or an opportunity on the short side then in the DAX for a more meaningful correction. The Nikkei, uh, still looking for this trend line test here at the 28,000 level. I think that's an opportunity on the long side to get a test up into uh, the 29,500 level. And then from there, I think we could see a more sustained uh, corrective move in terms of the Nikkei. The FTSE um, holding, attempting to hold this ascending trend line support. I think we might have to breach that and get a test uh, and set up a, a wedge here. Let's see, let's draw this in. So something like this um, wouldn't surprise me in terms of the FTSE. And, uh, and then we hold these prior highs here at uh, 6,650. And I think that sets up the blow off move up above uh, 7,000. And then from there, uh, probably a more meaningful correction in terms of the FTSE. Coming into the commodities, gold. Looking for a test of 1880 to fail um, and set up the move that I'm looking for to test this 1760 area support. From there, I think we could put in a more meaningful bottom in terms of gold and, uh, and trade higher. But uh, for now, I'm, I'm bearish gold, looking for this corrective phase. Certainly any move up into projected range, uh, daily range resistance, 1890. Bearish reversal patterns are an opportunity on the short side to my mind. Silver, similar story. Any move up into 2640, 2650, bearish reversal patterns. And I think we get this test of this uh, major uh, trend line support back down to 22. And then from there, I think we could have a meaningful low in place. And, uh, and I'm looking for a move up to test 29 in terms of silver. So some great two-way opportunities, I think, coming in, uh, in the metals. Crude, uh, looking for us to test 55. And then from there, I'm looking for a more meaningful pullback in terms of crude. But ultimately, then I look for us to hold the 51 level, sending trend line support en route to, to higher prices. I'm looking for crude to trade up towards uh, $60 a barrel. Um, so watching for uh, this support zone to get tested, I think, is, is going to be pivotal crude uh, in coming weeks. Copper. Looking for copper to test this resistance area. We've got range resistance, uh, multiple range resistance daily, weekly, and the monthly, which we've held once. So potential here for a double top. And again, a frustrating move, pull back to test the support zone down to 353. And then from there, I think we can extend higher once this complex correction completes and ultimately get a test of this major ascending trend line resistance. Obviously we want to see a bunch of divergence as we get up into this area. And then I think we can see a more meaningful correction in copper. And that, that correction in copper will fuel the correction in the commodity currencies from higher prices. I think we get back down to this sending trend line support at 338. And then maybe a more meaningful base develops. Last but not least, uh, Bitcoin. We were looking for a correction last week and we, 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 saw, uh, we saw the pullback. We're now testing this trend line support here at uh, the 31,000 area versus this swing high at the 40. So versus this structure, let me just draw it in. So it's clear. So whilst we hold these highs, then we do have an equality objective at 28,700. Now, if we get down to this area and we get bullish reversal patterns, we've got projected weekly range support, 28,100. Monthly range support, 2,800. 
we get down and we get bullish reversal patterns here for those who aren't already in the crypto space. Um, this, I think, could be an opportunity with bullish reversal patterns to, uh, to get long and ultimately then look for a retest and take out these highs on route to this interim 44,000 objective. And really, I, I remain constructive on, uh, on Bitcoin. We, we, at this juncture, for me to, uh, to reconsider things, we need to take out this trend line support uh, at 22,000 uh, 22, uh, to really start thinking that uh, we've seen a more meaningful high in terms, of, uh, in terms of Bitcoin. For now, this is, to my mind, is just a shakeout and we should, uh, we should see higher prices. So those are the charts and uh, areas of interest for me as we head into the back end of this week and early next week. Um, if you have any questions or any charts you'd like me to take a look at that I haven't covered in today's uh, discussion, now is the time to, uh, to chime in. You can either post uh, into the chat box or I can unmute your mic and you can speak to me uh, over audio. Equally, if you don't have a question, if everything's clear, uh, an N in the chat box is, is just as useful. So I know that we're all on the, on the same page and we can, uh, we can wrap this one up here and now. Okay, so I don't see any questions. That means I must have done a, a great job of explaining everything. Um, I'm gonna wrap this up here then guys, and we will reconvene at the same time next week. Thanks very much for your time. And uh, I hope this helps.